Welcome to these videos. Now we have Leslie Perez with us. Leslie, please tell us a little bit about yourself and what is your video about? Okay, so my name is Leslie Perez and I am majoring in computer engineering. This research project is about transdermal and oral drug delivery using nanofibers. This type of delivery can be greatly improved upon resulting in faster, constant, and more effective over-the-counter medicine. Medication that is introduced into the body, like patches, have longer lasting effects and could work as soon as it is taken or placed, and without the risk of hurting the stomach lining, which is great for those who take medication regularly. Very good. I like your video a lot, and I hope you all like it. Thank you, Leslie. Bye. Today, I'm going to be teaching you a little bit about nanofibers and drug delivery systems. You may be thinking, what does that even mean? Well, I'll tell you what it means, starting with the types of drug delivery. Medicinal drugs can be taken in various ways, by ingestion, like a pill or cough syrup, by inhalation, like asthma medication, by absorption through the skin, like nicotine patches, or by intravenous injection, like morphine through an IV. In this video, I will be focusing on the drugs that are taken through ingestion and through the skin. Believe it or not, nanofibers have been used in the past in oral drug delivery and have played a large role in the development of these kinds of drugs. Let's start with why oral drug delivery and transdermal drug delivery are preferred and how nanofibers are involved. Basically, taking a pill of some sort is a lot easier than having to go to the doctor for a shot every time you need to take your medicine. Instead, you take your medication yourself. It's super easy, mass production makes it cheaper to make and distribute, and it's non-invasive, meaning that no one has to inject anything or place any kind of medical instrument in you, which a lot of patients prefer, understandably so. What about absorption? A film loaded with drugs can be made with nanofibers. The film is easily applied to the skin, and like oral medication, there is no need for doctors or injections. The absorption of the medication through the skin removes the need. Now, to help you understand how nanofibers are involved, you need to know what some gel pills and transdermal patches are made with. Gel pills are usually coated in gelatin, which is made out of protein. Transdermal patches are made in layers. Simple ones have a backing layer to keep the drug safe. They have the drug and the adhesive, usually mixed in together, and finally, the release layer. Nanofibers allow for modified times and release rate in transdermal patches and pills alike. The problem with pills being coated in gelatin is that gastric juices will break down the capsule in minutes, thus losing parts of its intended effects. They can also take a really long time to dissolve in the first place, making it uncomfortable and inefficient. Nanofibers are great for this because certain solutions and builds can make it past the gastric juices, thus keeping most of the drug intact and it can be absorbed directly. Being able to control when the fibers dissolve is great because, as mentioned before, it allows the drug to work more effectively, it opens the door to make medication last longer, and it helps the drug to continue to work at the same rate for extended periods of time. So what is it all about? Let's talk about different types of releases. Nanofiber oral drug delivery can be released into the body in different ways. The first type of release is called fast release, which means that very soon after you take the drug, there is an initial burst and the drug starts to work very quickly. Then there is biphasic, which literally means having two phases. After taking the drug, there is a quick burst, like a fast release, but after that, there is a slower release of the drug at a constant rate. And it's neat because the patient doesn't have to administer the drug a lot of times. Biphasic release works best in layered fibers, which we will talk about later in the video. Then we have controlled release, which means that the drug works at a fixed rate from start to finish. We also have delayed release. These drugs are coated with certain fibers that don't dissolve in the stomach, which can ruin the drug's ability to work properly. Instead, they dissolve in the small intestine. In other words, it is enteric coated. This here is a chart on how regular medication tends to work. Notice how as time passes, the drug's effects lessen and you have to retake the drug. The arrows are pointing at every time the patient readministered the drug. Next is this chart showing how controlled nanofiber drugs work. There is an initial rise to the therapeutic range, which means the drug is working, and then constant release means that the drug is continuously working through longer periods of time. So much so that readministering the drug is unnecessary. How are they made? There are a few different ways to get drugs and fibers together. The first way is by blending. It's like baking a cake. You mix all of your ingredients together and bake, or force spin, your batter, and you get a cake at the end or in this case, fibers. Here in our laboratory, we manufacture nanofibers using a system that is very similar to making cotton candy. You can check out the other videos on this channel in which the method is thoroughly explained. 
Basically, the medicine is dissolved in a polymer solution and subjected to centrifugal forces. Blending is not the best because due to phase separation, the drug will stay on the surface of the nanofiber, which basically makes it a fast-release delivery and completely obliterates the possibility of a slow release. The second way is through physical adsorption. Unlike absorption, adsorption makes a thin layer on top of the fiber. There are three different ways to get physical adsorption on drugs and fibers. Number one, simple physical adsorption. Once your fiber is made, you place a drug on top of the fibers and leave them until they adsorb. Number two, nanoparticle assembly on the surface. This is done by spraying the drug on the polymers. And number three, layer by layer, multi-layer assembly. This is the best kind and the most common as well. With this kind of drug delivery, you can have multiple drugs, use soluble and insoluble drugs, and use higher loads of drugs. Here are a few visual examples of what the fiber looks like when it is loaded with the drugs. The first visual is the simple physical adsorption. Notice how the purple circles representing the drug are simply placed on top. The drug is fully absorbed. Towards the bottom, we see the second one. This is the nanoparticle assembly on the surface. The pink surrounding the fiber are nanoparticles that have been loaded with the drug. Moving on to the final assembly, we see the layer by layer assembly in which multiple layers of drugs are stacked and absorbed. What kinds of polymers have been used? Well, here's a list of the polymers that have been used in these kinds of drug delivery. If you take a closer look, you'll notice that most are biodegradable or hydrophilic. These kinds of polymers are essential in this kind of development simply because it's dealing with medication that must dissolve in or on your body. Okay, so let's recap. There are four types of medicinal drug delivery, ingestion, inhalation, absorption, and intravenous injection. In this video, we focused on oral and transdermal delivery, only because nanofibers can be applied to both of these and they are both non-invasive. There are four kinds of release, fast release, biphasic, controlled, and delayed. Nanofibers in drug delivery can be made through blending, which is like baking a cake, and through physical adsorption. In this category, we have three different types of adsorption, including simple, nanoparticle assembly, and multilayer assembly, which is the most common and most practical and effective. These drug delivery systems are very unstable and specific, so a lot more investigation needs to be done to fully understand and explore the possibilities of nanofibers for drug delivery. There is so much that researchers can further investigate in this field, and it seems that we are moving in the right direction.